Okay, so the, the version that you're going to play is, is, for an, is for the event, so it's not the real, real game because you start with some gold in your pocket, some weapons. In the actual game, you begin with nothing, you begin from the ground. Uh, we have like a small backstory of the game, like why this town, Rinoka, was built uh, beside a source of wealth. So the people in the town treat the dungeons as a gold mine, a place where they enter, extract some things that they can, that they can sell and they can profit from. So right now the town is, is not in the best shape. So when the game begins, uh, it's about Will deciding to actually pursue his dream of being a hero and, and uh, you know, doing something with the dungeons, trying to find out what they access in the beginning. So on this version, we're gonna start in the shop, but uh, we can start by showing the mechanics of the shop a little. So you, we can show how you set prices to the items. Uh, every time you find a new item, Will doesn't know the, the, the value of the item, so you need to test it, you need to try to figure out what's the good price for it, judging the reactions of the customers. So if you put something at a very high price, they will say, oh, this is too expensive, I'm leaving out, and it's, if it's too cheap, they will be super happy about it. So you want to find the right price and then sell it afterwards. The game remembers the previous prices, and there is also a supply and demand thing going on. So if you sell a lot of one item, the popularity is gonna go down and you're not gonna be able to sell it anymore, etc. So yeah, yeah, we explained the basics for the for the event demo. Uh, this is, for example, this is a very important item because when you're in the dungeons, uh, Will has this magic pendant that allows him to be teleported back to the town. And that is the safe way out. Because if you die in the dungeons, you lose everything you're carrying in your bag, and you don't want that, obviously. So what you want to do is, uh, when you have good, good items, when you have valuable items, you want to call it a day and say, okay, I'm heading back to the dungeons, I don't want to risk dying, and I'm gonna sell everything that I have carried. So this is where Will lives. This is his, his home, actually, which is also his shop. If you read there, you, you see the papers of the plan he has. He has a master plan, which is defeating the bosses of, of all the four dungeons to open the fifth gate. Okay. The, there okay. is explanation for this in the actual game and where he finds that paper. You have his bed where he can turn the day into night, so time advances every time to go to bed. And in this version, you start with a bow, with a, with a sword and arrow, and also a great sword, the fist, and a spear, which is one sample of each of the families of weapons that you have in the game. You have five families and around, I think we have close to 50 weapons in the game. 50? Right now. Yes, around 50 game. Yeah. So, uh, you have some items placed already here with some prices, but if you press A, you will see the interface to set the prices. So, for example, we could try to sell one potion. If you grab one potion with A, and you can place it here, for example, on the empty slot. There you go. And you, you, you can figure out the price. So, let's say we want to sell the potion for 500, for example. You go to the price tag, and press A, and then you set exactly, that's it. Okay. So, okay, let's try that. And the other items are already set in the demo. So you go to the door of the shop and you hold it to open. Oops. Oh, no, no worries. That's, oh, that's actually in the shop, so you can wander around the town, but let's do that later. So you can enter, you can hold it to open the shop, and then customers will enter and they will judge if they find something that is interesting for them and if the price is right. So they'll kind of go, go and are they just going to put the money in the no, they, 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 they okay. queue here, they wait for you. So you have to go there, press A, and you sell the thing. And as the, as the game progresses, we add more and more mechanics to the shop. So you have a special request from customers that will come and say, hey, I want this sword, I will be back in three days. If you have it, I will give you a lot of money. You press A, you sold it, and you made 40-something uh, bucks. And you also sold the crystal. I'm wondering if a customer will come and look for the potion because that's probably overpriced. Let's see if this elder woman, nope, not interested. So do, um, are the people that come, are they kind of like regulars? Can you, can you get an idea of like, this person likes this kind of thing? Uh, there are some particular uh, characters do have preferences. Okay. Some of them are generalists, it really depends. Uh, you sell that for a too high price, so that increases the chance of getting thieves on your shop. If you are greedy, you will get bad reputation and thieves will come to your shop. 
But yes, the, 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 the customers that enter the shop are the NPCs of the town. And as the game progresses, more and more people come to the town, to Rinoka, because it's getting more famous, because there is this character wheel that is getting deeper in the dungeon. So people are attracted to that, and you get new and different customers on the shop. Also, you can upgrade the shop, have more places for placing the items, you can hire an assistant, there are a lot of things that come afterwards in the game. Okay. So nobody seems interested in our overpriced potion. I wanted to show you the reaction of this gust when they say, oh, this is way too expensive. Yeah. But you can also like, simply close the, close the, the shop. Can I change it now? Yeah, you could change it. At any time, you can set another price. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that that still probably going to be a little, a little too expensive. Yeah. But anyway, since they don't seem to be interested, we can just close the shop. Yeah. And you have a balance of your day. How many, you know, how many gold you made from each item, etc. And now we can leave the town and head to the dungeons for the for the combat part of the game, the dungeoning part. So if you press A, this is the town during the night. Uh, here is the blacksmith. This is Senon, who is like a, a, a guide for you. He's gonna. He used to know your parents and your grandparents, so he's gonna be a little worried about you entering too deep in the dungeons. But at the same time, he's gonna help you. And if you head this way, you will leave the town and head for the dungeons. There are uh, four different dungeons, but you can only enter the hardest ones when, the, when you beat the bosses. As you beat the bosses, you will get new ones. And this is the big mysterious door, the fifth okay, gate, so that nobody has ever entered. That, exactly, that's the for the end of the game. And that's be, behind it is the explanation of the, of the whole structure of the different dimensional dungeons. Yeah, so this is the first dungeon, the easiest one, and we can enter. So, yeah. Combat is based mostly on positioning and knowing the enemies, and also on timing. So it's not a hack and a slash. It's more like it's more like probably like all Zelda's, and we also like like more time-based games. You can carry two sets of weapons. So that's an arrow. Uh, that's a bow and arrow, for example. And if you press the left, the left bumper, you can switch to a sword and shield. That's the secondary attack of the sword and shield, which is the shield, and that's the main attack, which has a three-hit combo. And on the combat, it's very important to, uh, to roll. So with the left trigger, you can roll around. Yeah, there you go. Because positioning is so important, uh, you need to master rolling to survive. So uh, head to any door you like. And the dungeons are obviously uh, randomly generated. So every time you enter, they are new. Yeah, you are quite overpowered for the demo. Yeah, people, you know, they don't have a lot of time, so they, we, we don't want them to die too much. Right. On the actual game, the game is, is challenging. So is there any reason to break all of these things? Or? Some of them are just decorative, but some of them give you things. Like the skeletons, the skeletons they will drop stuff. Them. Sometimes they can even drop weapons or very valuable items. Okay. You can roll through the voids. And all the enemies drop items, and if you press Y, yeah, no, no problem. It's not. It's not. It's just a small, a small hit. So if you press Y, you can see everything you're carrying in your inventory. And when you die, you lose everything except the first row. First row. So you want to keep the valuable items there. So uh, as a player, anytime you enter the dungeons, what you want to ask yourself is, am I being too greedy? And if I die, I'm going to lose a lot of money, or should I be safe and return? And when you want to return, you use this. You pay a small amount of gold and head back. Exactly. Uh, so is this the maximum amount of stuff I can carry in one run? Yes, and you cannot expand the bag during the whole game. You always have limited space. We want you to make decisions on what is good to carry and what should I leave behind. Yeah. And then, turns right into small. Oh, so that, well, that, that'll turn things immediately into gold. Exactly. A small amount is much worse than selling the stuff, but it's, it's for scrapping items. Uh, or if you miss some gold to use this, you can use this to generate a small amount of gold so you can leave the dungeons. Yeah, for example, that's just seven gold, which is a very small amount. Right.
Okay, let, let's see if we can find the door for the second floor because things get harder there. The first floor is super easy, especially for this event version. Yeah, of this branch. If you press select, you can see the map of the dungeon that you have explored. So you can go down and go to the left, right, and the number of chests that you have found, etc. There are also uh, secret rooms, special rooms. There are many, many things on the on the dungeons. And you said there are bosses at the end of the dungeons. Yes, at the end of each dungeon, there is a, a very big boss. You can only open the chest when you kill all the enemies in the room. And sometimes, like in this one, the doors are closed. So just like in the Binding of Isaac, you cannot leave the room un until you kill all the enemies. Yes, some items you have to uh, have like a special qualities. This one forces you to put it here. Others destroy items to the side or multiply items. So you, you want, we have some inventory management part to it. So when you're in the dungeon, you are thinking not only what should I keep, but how can I organize things so I make the most of it? It's like a small puzzle, very simple. But you can also move, uh, quickly move things around with the left bumper and the right bumper. Yeah, like no, everything is on the chest, and if you go there, that is, okay. is, is a solution. And it'll put it in the right spot, I see. Yes, okay. yes, it's a smart. Yeah. So it's like if you have a real bag, you'd have to sometimes put things in certain compartments. Well, yeah, I mean, on the side. The, uh, I mean, the metaphor doesn't really work because it's more like magical properties of the elements, but we wanted to have this uh, inventory management mechanic to the game. Each of the four dungeons in the game, obviously, is a different civilization with different look, different enemies, different boss, etc. Right, this one was the Golem one. Yeah, this is, this is the Golem, we call it the Golem dungeon, yeah. For example, that, that piece of crystal is something you use to enchant items in the witch. So you can have a, you can craft a soldier's sword like this one, but then you can have a soldier's sword plus or plus plus, so it hits harder. And after that, you need to craft the next generation of swords. Is there any like uh, magic? Can I get like a fire sword? Yes, some of the of the paths in the blacksmith allow you to craft a poisonous, a stunning swords, etc. Uh, these things are just gonna slowly creep toward me. Yes, you can also hit them and you and you grab them. Not at all. You can ignore everything and go straight to the next floor. There is actually a potion that you can craft on the witch that tells you uh, the quickest way to the next floor. So, for example, if you want to rush into the boss, you can buy that potion, avoid all the dungeons, and go floor after after, after floor straight to the boss. Okay. I've noticed this thing was like pulsing. Yeah, because it's telling you that your bag is quite full, so okay. maybe you want to head back to the shop. Okay. Yes, maybe. Um, and is this stuff going to hurt me? No, it just slows you, yeah. This is a healing place. So there is one of these on each floor of each dungeon, and you can heal a certain amount for free before it's depleted. And besides that, you have some potions that you can use when the combat gets tricky. Yeah. You're not in risk in this level, but if we find the next level, which should be to the top, it will get more, more challenging. I mean, it's, that, that sword hits like a track here. It's, What's that? That sword hits like a track here. It's, it's, yeah. it's just too strong for the first floor. You obliterate all the Couple enemies. Hits for just about a bit. There you go. Oh, that's good. That's a valuable item. So that is the floor to the to the next. Uh, that is the door to the next floor. It's three floors on each dungeon, and after the three floors, you find the boss. And it gets harder and harder the deeper you get. And the enemies change, and the art changes a little.
That's a decoration. <laughs> it's a bit cruel to have swords like decorations. Like I want that sword. No, I just found a good sword. Yeah, but it's it's an old sword because exactly other heroes also enter the dungeons and they leave they leave things behind. So should I should I teleport out or should I? Probably, I think you can teleport out. Okay. Um, so, so you exactly you hold B, hold B. and yeah. you teleport back to the town. Yeah, you, you see all the enemies that you defeated and everything you're carrying on your back. You arrive to the second floor. In two more floors, you will have arrived to the boss. Okay. Now, I left this dungeon. If I go back tomorrow, um, it's brand what new. am I going to find? It's, it, it's, it's a new one, okay. yes. yes. It, we, we generate a dungeon every time you enter. There is an item that allows you to open a portal, like in Diablo, where you'll allow to return to the same dungeon. So, for example, if you arrive to the boss, you might want to open that portal, go to the town, leave the items, get some potions, and then try to kill the boss. Okay, so we'll see you out yeah. Maybe you, you, can, you can go to the blacksmith to see like sample of what you can craft. It's a nice game. Yeah, and you can craft armor, and if you just scroll down. Yeah, different types of armors and four, you know, four levels of progressions as you get to other dungeons. Okay, so there's like... This one reduces my speed. Exactly. Okay, exactly. So there is some of that. Exactly. Right. But I can compensate for it with some boots. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, but, is there a concept of like um, pieces? Like, can I? I can wear these boots with this armor. Yes. You can. Uh, you can combine the armors in any way you like, okay. and we don't have any advantages if you have all the set of the single armor. We don't have it. At least, not as far as I know. I'm not 100% okay. sure because we thought about that at some time, sure. but I think we don't have it. So I think I think you had enough. Yeah, you can craft this, for example. No, not this one. The one, the one. Yeah, you have all the items that it requires. You have all the recipe, and you have 4,000 gold, so you can craft it. Okay, so that's a helmet. Yep. And then so and there's three pieces of armor: helmet, chest, and boots. Exactly. Yeah. And if you press RB, you can see sword and shields. All the sword and shields of the game. The big swords, the spears, the gloves, and the bows. So gloves is that like close melee? It's close melee and it's the highest DPS in the game. Okay. But it, it, it requires some skill. It's risky. Is, is there any magic or anything? No, 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 no. We don't have magic. We, we had at some point in the game, but it didn't really work with the enemies because uh, the combat is very about knowing the mechanics of the enemies. Sure. So we wanted to focus on that. Because uh, magic tended to be very broken, and it made the game not not so fun. That's usually how. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we we removed it. We removed it. Um, yeah. So yeah, you had it. So you had your new helmet. It on, exactly. And see, if you go here, when you start the game, you don't have a blacksmith, you don't have the witch, you don't have any commerces. You need to bring them to the town. So you can invest gold here to bring them. This is like an announcement board. So you can open new shops that you can then trade with. For example, this guy, Le Retalier. He's a, a rival merchant, so he's gonna sell you overpriced stuff. So, for example, if you miss, if you're missing something for a site, you can go to him and purchase it at a very high price. You, if you want, we can, we can, we can hire him right now. So this building guy will come and, and do his job, and we will get a brand new, a brand new shop. And he's gonna sell the same items that you find but at a higher price. And we have, we have a fancy generator of names, so he's gonna be like, yeah, this might look like a rock, but this is a, an exquisite rock. So he's gonna sell it at a high price, yeah. Yeah, he's like, by far the best shop in Runoka, etc. So for now, you only have items of the Golem Civilization, and eventually he will sell you all the items in the game. Right, $450 for a pass. Yeah, kind of like probably if you, if you sell it, you can sell it for 80 or 100. Right. It's like six times or seven times more. So it would be like if you just, if you absolutely needed the item. Exactly, exactly. So I got one of these books last time. Yeah, you had one of those, you found one, yeah. That's an expensive item. And down here, you have the witch, which is where you craft potions, the healing potions, 
and also other types of special potions. I think in these versions we don't have the, the, the special potions yet. So this is uh, an intellectual always reading a book. Uh, she has a cat as uh, every wish shield. So you can craft uh, higher and higher potions which tend to be very, very expensive down the road. And with the right trigger, you can also enchant the things you have. So you can enchant your armor and your weapons, so they protect you more or, or hit harder. But there is a limit to it. So you can enchant a couple of times, and then you need to craft the next, uh, the, the the best version of the of the weapon in the blacksmith. Yeah, so now the helmet that you crafted is better, and it gives you more HP and more armor. And you don't have enough empowering crystals to enchant it further. So there's like some balance of stuff you sell, some stuff you need to keep to upgrade your stuff. That's, that's a constant in the game. You're always like, okay, this might be good for, for crafting, this might be good for selling, this is something I'm not interested in, I'm going to leave this behind. You're always making that kind of decisions. We added a wish list actually to the game. So not in this version, but you can say, okay, I'm interested in crafting this. So every time you find an item that is useful for what you have in mind, for the goal that you have for crafting, it's going to be marked that you need this. So it's easy to remember what you want to keep and you, what you don't want to sell and, and you want to you know, store until you can craft something. This is a father and his son is over here. There are some NPCs that have backstories to them and as the game progresses, they will tell you more, more about themselves, about the dungeons, about the town, and about you, and your family story, etc., etc. Yeah, the, the way we tell the story is very, um, is very scattered. It's a little like in Dark Souls, where you find the story here and there, and you find like inscriptions in the dungeons from heroes that went before you. The NPCs will tell you some stuff, and as the game progresses, you will read things on the descriptions of the items, you will find books, and eventually you will get to know more about the story of the town, the story of the dungeons, etc. So it's, 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 it's a narrative game, even if it's not the core of the game. So she mentioned Crazy Pete. Yeah. If I find Crazy Pete, will he give me some advice or something? Well, actually, Crazy Pete is dead. You know, you know that when you begin in the game because it's part of the tutorial. Okay. So Crazy well, Pete is this guy. Else, Crazy Pete is like the Cicerone for Will. He's the guy that used to explore the dungeons before Will. So Will wants to follow the tracks of Crazy Pete okay. and and succeed where he failed. Okay. okay. Is there anything else? That no, I that, that's around. pretty much the core of the of the game. There, there is plenty of mechanics that we could dive through, uh, the, um, dive through, but. That, that's that's possibly the core of it. Like the the dungeoning part and the tone management part, we tried to make the game balanced so the both cores of the game really really work well together. That's right, the idea. Yeah, it seems like it, it seems like from this little bit, it seems like it did. It does. Like I definitely feel like hopefully. Um, I, I I think I'm gonna have fun trying to uh, price things right and getting. Yes. 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 It's it's uh, satisfactory. It's rewarding when you say yes, right. I did it. And now. So the goal with the money, is that really just to improve your armor and buy potions and stuff like that, or is there another... Well, you can also in, like open new commerces in the, in the, in the shop, yeah. uh, in the town, sorry, and you can also improve your shop. So you can have larger versions of your shop, okay. you can have the props of your shop, like the, the sale box, or the cash register, or your bed, or a bigger chest, so you can store more stuff. So you can upgrade your shop, upgrade the town, and also uh, spend money on the on the commerces. For example, this one over here, the hawker. Don't uh, as you progress in the game, he's gonna send you decorations for your shop. So you can customize your shop as you like it, and it's also gonna give you like uh, passive effects. So you're gonna get less thieves, or you're gonna get better prices, or you're gonna get alien respawn of great discounts. This is not part of the game. <laughs> it's all pixel art in the game. This will never be done. So yeah, there is, it's all about the gold in the game. There is no experience or leveling system, obviously, because we want you to be a good shopkeeper, and that's the way you will beat the game. Okay. Pass second. Cool. Oh, okay. Sounds great. Thank you so much.